What's up guys? We have come out to the intercoastal waterway, which is this body of water right here that effectively separates Surfside from the mainland, making it an island. Now we are under one of the two primary bridges that people use to travel back and forth across the waterway. And there are a variety of different fish species that will swim up and down these waterways, either going from the ocean to the inland uh, salt flats or vice versa. You also get dolphins in here from time to time. So lots of wildlife to be seen. And I think if I don't lose my footing and tumble in, we should catch a couple of nice fish today. Now I have to be very careful where I sit and put my gear down because as you can see, the uh, concrete structure that's used to be on the base of this bridge, it's full of these crevices and holes, which is just, it's a haven for all different types of snakes. And there are rattlesnakes out here. I actually saw a ribbon snake on the way here, which means that, you know, reptiles are out and about, they're moving right now. So, got my backpack set over here, but it's stuff like this, these tufts of grass here, and then here. That's the type of area a snake might be hiding out in, so I don't want to sit on that. The really unique, really unique structure with some really unique plant life on it. So that pylon right behind me is going to be the best spot, I think, to start with. It's a good structure. Uh, it's been put there, obviously, to keep boats from ramming into the rocks. You'll see these around structures like this. Because the intercoastal waterway is, in effect, a ship channel. That's why you see all the bridges have such a high clearance. You could build a bridge to just go straight across this, but the reason they're so high is not just because of hurricanes and the flooding that comes with them, but also so you can have big ships coming through back and forth. So I'm going to pitch this bait right on the outside of that pylon right there. Boom. And well, now we just feel and wait. Fish on. Can you hear it? A croaker aptly named because of the croaking sound they make. A relative of the whiting, black drum and red drum. Get this hook out. I have to use our small hook disgorger. This is how this works by the way. You just put this right in the bend of the hook. There we go, pop it out, got my bait back. Lovely fish. I don't know if you can hear that sound. The reason it's called a croaker is they have these teeth in the back of their throat that they use to crush uh, crustaceans, shrimp, you know, hermit crabs, things like that. And uh, they vibrate those, they rub them together to make that noise. Really cool. I mean, these ones are named for it, they're named croaker, but I mean, pretty much all members of this family of fish can do it. Or at least most of them, anyway. Yeah, really pretty fish. And they just have a super aggressive take. Uh, if you look up by his tail, right here at this, my uh, index finger on my left hand, you can see that violet, violet color right at the end of his uh, second dorsal fin. Just gorgeous. Something they share in common with red drum is that iridescent blue near the tail fin. That's what's called an inferior mouth right there. Not that, there we go, get that pine needle out of the way. The inferior mouth opens up beneath the curve of its nose to feed off the bottom. Just gorgeous animal. Man, I love fish. And there he goes. Just releases himself. All you gotta do is add water. All right, I think we got a fish on. Very light. Yep, we got something. Oh, it's a tiny one. Look at this little guy. That's a monster. Look at that. The bait that he took is almost as big as his head. Really pretty fish. I love those stripes and you can hear him. That's the biggest one so far. Not a bad croaker. Very vocal fish.
let this pretty little fish swim free. long-term fish can behind me. You can see they've got a truck here and a trailer. There's no wheels on the front of that truck, so I'm assuming they've been there for a while. They've got a table, some chairs set out. Pretty cool. I wonder how long he's been here. change of locations. So this is another bridge. This is not the intercoastal waterway actually. This is the original Brazos River mouth. So if you look on a map, you'll see the Brazos River splits just before it deltas into the coast. One of them, this one right here, is the original Brazos River mouth. The other one is actually something that I believe the Army Corps of Engineers uh, helped develop over time for shipping channel purposes. So what we're doing is we're coming out here. This is actually the city of Freeport. The Freeport City Museum is not that big building right there, but a small house behind it. And we're gonna come out here where you see everybody launch their, uh, their yachts and their sailboats and catamarans and all those things that I don't even know what I'm talking about. And we're gonna try to see if we can catch some fish that might be hiding underneath it because boats sitting at docks for a lengthy amount of time provide great cover for fish. Today looks like a good day. The water's pretty clear with a nice green tint. That's something we couldn't see at the waterway, the intercoastal waterway down that way because it was too muddy. This really salty content in the water makes me think we're gonna get some good fish today. Train behind us. First thing, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a double drop rig right over here on, on the side of these boats. Right at the corner there where they meet the deeper part of the channel. That's where I want to pitch this. Check my drag. I don't want the drag too tight. Make sure I don't break anybody's windows on their yacht. If that happens, we're just we're just leaving. We're going. Now I've got the rod just sitting on the deck here, which under a lot of circumstances, that's really a good way to lose your gear. But look what I've done. I've just loosened up the drag so light that any little fish pulling on it is gonna take line. So I'm not worried about the rod going over. Oh, oh, fish already, there's a fish already. Put you right there. I pulled some of the drag back and a fish pulled on the other end of the line. I could feel it in my hands. So now I'm just, I'm just ledgering here, touch ledgering. Let's see if I feel that fish again. Meanwhile, the wind's about to blow my camera off, off this uh, perch that it's on into the water. Come on. Oh yeah. Got something. Not, not something huge. I have a feeling it's probably a croaker or a whiting. But there's a fish on for sure. Oh, hello. A massive croaker. Really, my line's caught the deck here. Here we go. Nice sized croaker. Wow, that was fast. See, this is, a, this is a pretty big one right here. Lovely fish. Beautiful. You can hear that. And that hook set, I'm glad I did that hook set really quick because these guys are a lot like catfish in the sense that they will just inhale baits all the way to the back of their throat. So the fact that I was able to set the hook really fast meant that it just caught the corner of his lip. There we go. What a beautiful fish. Noisy too. <laughs> Let's put him back. Get some shrimp back out on that hook and cast it back out. That was awesome. Yes, indeed. There's 
more. Oh, different species, guys. Different species. Look at this, guys. Beautiful little pinfish. I think they call them that because of the pin stripes that they have. Really small. They don't get much bigger than this. That's why you need a small hook. The lovely blue and gold stripes and a massive dorsal fin. They say that pinfish, uh, live baited, make great, great baits for red drum. Lovely. Let's put him back. Just gonna drop him right. Splash! And there he goes. I'm gonna have one more casts. And I'm gonna cast over. If you look behind you. Not, don't turn around. Look when I turn the camera. If you look over here where that wall meets the water there, that's where I'm going to cast. I have a feeling that's going to be a really good spot for fish patrolling for food. I've had a lot of success in spots like that in the past uh, for sheep's head. I never like to say, okay, this is what we're going to try to catch, because then you don't catch it. And you end up having to edit out that entire segment of film and anything that you said in that moment. Up now. All right, cast. Pretty good. Go, fish on. That was quick. everywhere. Calm down, buddy. Calm down. Oh, wow. This is a massive pinfish. It's huge. Wow. So I put this one down momentarily. If you look down here at the anal fin, you can see this gorgeous violet blue that I haven't noticed on the other fish quite yet, at least not this prominently. Really, really beautiful. What a lovely animal. Let's let him go free. Well guys, we could probably stay out here all day and all night and keep catching fish. But as a wise person once said, all good things must come to an end. So I think our video today will end right about here. Get yourself some white tackle, some shrimp, small hooks. You can have a blast catching pinfish and croaker under bridges and off of small piers like this. Even small boat docks, doesn't matter. Find structure, you'll find fish. And it should be fun. Light tackle fishing, guys, it's hard to beat.